Okay, I'm going to do a short video on the question, did Paul murder James, the Bishop of Jerusalem? So I want, I'm doing this because I want to show that I am fair to Paul. He, this is a false accusation that uh, Mr. Doherty brought based upon, uh, and in defense of Mr. Doherty, uh, Mr. Uh, Doherty, a uh, historian of that year, or an earlier era, made a mistake and said this very thing. But when you look at the source and you know who it is, and you look at other sources, it's clear that it was a mistake. He was mistaking, uh, Mr. Doherty's source was mistaking the killing of James, an apostle during the middle of Acts <laughs> with Paul killing James, the uh, apostle who's in charge of the the 12. He runs the uh, Ebionite church at, uh, at Jerusalem. So um, is, I'm also just correcting the record here. But I also want to say is that whenever Paul's being falsely accused, I try to come to his defense because I don't want him to come out to be a, 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 a caricature of who he really was. He was a very sincere man, but sincerely wrong. And the other thing is, that so sometimes he doesn't preach faith alone. And sometimes he doesn't teach against the law. Sometimes he teaches the opposite of both those principles. So I always try to show you that this person could speak out of both sides of his mouth in the same book. <laughs> so in the book of Romans, he says it both ways. Faith alone some, in Romans 4, uh, but in Romans uh, 2, he says those who are the doers of the law are justified. I mean, you know, can you put any of these things together? No, they don't make sense combined. But somehow in a dialectic, maybe they do. Maybe Paul's making the argument to set you, a, set you at ease at first in chapter 2 of Romans, and then he contradicts himself by, get the, by the time he gets to Romans 4. I, I don't know. But, yeah, what, what's on his mind. But all I can tell you is these are contradictory principles. But I, I would say you can't say he consistently teaches faith alone or he consistently teaches against the law. He doesn't. And, and that undermines the opponents we have who, who believe he consistently only teaches faith alone and only teaches the law. So I don't need to prove that he always teaches in favor of the law and always teaches against faith alone. I know that he doesn't always do that. He contradicts himself, which which means he's what? Not a true prophet of God. Anyway, so let's look at this one so that we can get this out of the way. And Mr. Dowdy's uh, YouTube videos and all this stuff and podcasts where he, he makes this accusation need to be taken down or at least corrected. So I hope he does that uh, because we shouldn't leave these false accusations against Paul sitting around to gather dust. But in case it does, I'm going to leave it out there so this title will attract some attention and Paul won't be blamed for murdering a Bishop James of Jerusalem. Okay, here we go. Okay, so an article I wrote back in 2017 is entitled, Did Paul Attempt to Murder or Did He Murder James, the Brother of Jesus? Okay, and one thing we need to know is that what, before Paul became a Christian, he definitely did try to kill James, okay? And he threw him off the temple's roof, and we're, we'll go through that. But the accusation that uh, Mr. Dougherty is bringing up is that Paul is killing James, the bishop of Jerusalem, after he became a Christian. Now, that would be like Paul's still a murderer. <laughs> and, and that's just like really uh, got to be corrected. That's not right. So anyway... Uh, as I say here, I don't think Paul murdered James, the author of the Epistle of James and the brother of Jesus. The alleged fact Paul did so has been recently resurrected, but I find it highly dubious or lacking foundation or both. So this is how I wrote it when I first wrote this article. Um, and, and, but anyway, so anyway, Dowdy's video, Luke, colon, Paul killed James at 1218. At 1340, he says, Josephus in Antiquities, 9394, said Paul killed James, but a complete excerpt from Josephus's Antiquities on the death of James does not reference Paul. And see excerpt at the end below. So I had, the, there's proof of this all in the article. Instead, I, so this is how I originally wrote this, because I did not have the proof yet of Dorotheus when I wrote this first uh, section. But, you're, but I found it later and I added it at the end. Instead, I believe that the original account of Paul's attack on James is correctly recorded by the Ebionites in the Clementine homilies. It was a physical attack by Paul on James prior to Paul's Damascus experience, and it did not end in James' death. I will quote the account below. But presently there is stirring afoot by others than Mr. Doherty. Yeah, so there wasn't just Mr. Doherty. There were, there was some scholars involved in, who were saying the same thing. To draw all, out old authorities, in particular from Bishop Dorotheus from the 300s, it says Paul killed James, the brother of Jesus, in what would have to be 62 AD. This would mean Paul murdered James after Paul became a Christian missionary in about 37 AD. A shocking implication, to say the least. To those who read my first edition of this article online since October 2016, 
I finally found Dorothea's work to confirm or disprove my original theories. So my original theory is this can't possibly be Paul after he's uh, had his experience on the road to Damascus. It's not when it happened. It turns out that my suspicion on what, what were the errors present in Dorotheus were confirmed. What I conjectured was that Dorotheus' historical account confused James, the bishop of Jerusalem, with the apostle James, son of Alphaeus, who was indeed killed in Acts 12, verse 2, by Herod in around 58 to 62 AD. This is exactly present what I later found in how Dorotheus titled the life of James, the bishop of Jerusalem, and brother of Jesus, calling him also James, uh, of the son of Alphaeus. And then I give a cite. So let me let me put a pause on here. I want to see if I can pull that up. All right, so first of all, we're going to take a look at the book source where I finally found the correct uh uh, portion of Dorotheus' histor historical account, and that's how we we're able to find out what his mistake was, because you can read what he said, and now we're reading a book, what, what is Ancient Historical, a the Ancient Ecclesiastical Histories of the First 600 Years of Christ, written, by, written in the Greek tongue by three learned hi historiographies. So if you look down there, see where it says, um, I hope you can see my highlighter, Dorotheus, Bishop of Tyre. So this is one of the, very hard to find this was anywhere, and this is it. So God, thank, praise God, because this is an accusation that should not be allowed to stand against Paul. It's not true. And it's London, and it's uh, 1663. Again, books.google.com, this is completely free. People would pay hundreds of dollars in the past to try to get copies of books like this, too, through book researchers. And now it's free online. I mean, what an amazing gift that you know, Google may have its faults, but its library that it created is just unbelievable. Thank, thank, thank the good Lord for it. Okay, so I'm going to put this on pause and pull up the page that we need to look at. All right. So here we are at page 534, and now I'm going to go look here and try to find the text, so I'm going to put it on pause again. Okay, now this is going to be very hard for anyone to see in the video, um, but you see, can you see here it says James, the son of Alphaeus, and then he's saying the translator, which I think it means he's trying to have it translated. Okay, I'm going to highlight it, that might help you. Here, mine author was fully deceived and laid down he knew not what him placing for the 11th Apostle, one Simon Judas, a successor of James in Jerusalem. But the Apostle, do you see that? But, here, but the Apostle was called James, son of Alphaeus. Okay, so now he's saying Simon Judas was the successor of James in Jerusalem. And I think what he's inferring is that that James of Jerusalem, the one who runs the show there, is... Uh, the son of Alphaeus. Okay, and by the apostles placed bishop of Jerusalem. Yeah, so he's saying that James, the son of Alphaeus, was made, placed to be the bishop of Jerusalem. Can you see that? Okay, then that's false. There is his mistake. Because now he's going to say, if you read this out of context, you're going to say, James, the bishop of Jerusalem, whatever's going to happen next, was caused by Paul to, to the bishop who's the bishop of Jerusalem, and that's false. I mean, I mean, he, he did have an attack on the bishop of Jerusalem, but he didn't kill him in the incident, and the actual person he's talking about who got killed is James, the son of Alphaeus. So I'll, this will be clearer as I go here. He was by the... How do people read these old texts? He was by the Jews set upon the pinnacle of the temple. So apparently what's happening here is uh, Paul's going to be involved in this, and, and the uh, Ebionites record this too. Paul puts James, the bishop of Jerusalem, up on the pinnacle of the temple. And then this says, as Abdias writes, by Saul afterwards, who is called Paul, thrown down and having breath after his fall, one came with a fuller brush club and knocked him upon his head and brained him. Eusebius writes that the same at large. Okay. So actually, this doesn't say he killed him even. Okay, now that I'm reading it closely, it's, it's he brained him. But you could say that, he, you know, he broke, he broke into his head. So maybe that is a, a murder. So this is what 
creates the controversy. And Dorotheus is uh, confusing James, the son of Alpheus, who was killed during the, I think it's in Acts 14, uh, he was murdered. James, the bishop of Jerusalem, was very much alive while Paul was an apostle. <laughs> Excuse me, why do I say that? While James, while, while Paul was coming to Jerusalem uh, and he, in his own letters, he's claiming to be an apostle at the same time. So you would have to infer that if this was an event that happened involving Paul and the Bishop of Jerusalem, that this happened after Paul's alleged conversion on the road to Damascus, you would have to think Paul turned into a killer and found a way to chase James up onto the top of the pinnacle. So that's preposterous. I mean, really, you know, even if you don't like Paul, you you can't say that's happening. He's not pursuing the Christians anymore. This would have been an event that only could have happened between him and the Bishop of Jerusalem prior to 34 AD when he had his experience on the road to Damascus. Okay, so this is the source of the accusation, and you can see it's confused even in the text. And this led some people to take out of context that the Bishop of Jerusalem was attacked while Paul was a Christian, well, while Paul was claiming to be a Christian, and killed by being brained on the head. So let's now go back to my original text, and we'll uh, continue discussing this. Okay. So what we're going to learn is the Ebionites do have an account of telling the story that prior to Paul's road to Damascus experience, there was an attack by Paul, then mostly known as Saul, was attacking uh, James in, a, in, in his period when he's persecuting Christians. The early Ebionites, arguably the original apostolic Jamesian church's name at Jerusalem, preserved an account in the Clementine recognitions dating to at least around the 200s about Paul and James the Just. Be advised that Rufinus in the 300s later did some edits under pressure from Jerome to add Trinitarian corrections to all his translations, including this work. For example, he'll mention that threefold blessedness is used in a, as a baptist, baptism formula in the Clementine homilies, which doesn't even appear in Acts, just to show you. Rufinus admitted to such doctrinal correcting activity to early writers' works as he considered it more a sin to perpetuate error as now imagined than fabricating changes into what the reader ends up assuming is the original wording. So that's why, unfortunately, anything that went through an editor's hand in the 300s will look like it's completely Trinitarian and all these things because these people thought it was worse to hand you a text that was original and didn't have these things than to give it to you uh, the way it originally was. So they had to change it make you think it existed much earlier. Anyway, Rufinus edited these homilies. It is obviously Rufinus who in the late 300s apparently removed all references to Paul. He instead called him the enemy or Simon Magus. However, some scholars alternatively believe the evidence called him Simon Magus to conceal it was about Paul. They had no reason to do that. They were in charge of the church. Yet the Ebionites had no reason to do so early on or later. I, okay, I'm reading my own writing. For even in the 200s, the true church with Tertullian leading the way were fighting Marcionism by proving Paul was not a valid apostle of Jesus. So that's in our series called The Secret History of the Early Church, which is hidden up. That Tertullian is fighting a Paul-only movement, and he's discrediting Paul as an apostle <laughs> to do so. Okay, um, any similar work from the Ebonites would fit right in with that defense. Thus, in my opinion, it appears more likely that this Simon Magus label for Paul was due to the clumsy Catholic editing by Rufinus to deflect any negative views by the 4th century Constantinian-influenced church regarding Paul. Regardless, otherwise the Clementine's accounts appear to be the original version. The Clementine homilies tell how Paul, a.k.a. Simon Magus, attacked James the Just and left him for dead. However, it makes no mention that James died from the injuries. This reads... The high priest of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem had often sent priests to ask us that we might discourse with one another concerning Jesus. When it seemed a fit opportunity and it pleased all our church. Now this is, by the way, the Acts of the Apostles from the true 12. And this is the objective Acts. The Acts written for Paul was designed to win an appeal where he has to be made to look as good as possible because we cannot afford to lose the appeal in front of Nero. So now you're reading objective history, in my view. We accepted the invitation. So this is the 12 saying, we're accepting the Jewish people's allowance for us to have a discussion. And we went up to the temple. It was crowded with people who had come to listen, many Jews and many of our own brethren. First, the high priest told people that they should listen patiently and quietly. Then he began exalting with many praises the right of animal sacrifice for the remission of sins and found fault with the baptism given by our Jesus to replace animal sacrifice. 
To him, our James, meaning uh, the Bishop of Jerusalem, began to show by abundant proofs that Jesus is the Christ, and that in him are fulfilled all the prophecies which related to the, his humble advent. For James showed that two advents of him are foretold, one in humiliation, which he had now accomplished, the other in glory, which is yet to be accomplished. And when James had plainly taught the people concerning these things, he added this also, that unless a man be baptized in water in the name of the... Now, did the he say threefold blessedness? No way. This is Rufinus' writings, but I'm, put, I'm leaving it there. You, you have to decide. I've told you the truth. Rufinus confessed that he changes them, them so that our ears are not offended or find anything discordant to, to what is our present doctrine. So this is, this is the, uh, the explanation I would say. It's really, this is a, an addition by Rufinus. Anyway, in the name of whatever you think he, he, it said, but in the name of Jesus is what it appears six times in the book of Acts. So even the book of Acts can't, wasn't ever changed. As the true prophet taught, he can neither receive remission of sins nor enter the kingdom of heaven. So baptism was very much being taught by the twelve as a step towards salvation. And he declared that this is the prescription of the unbegotten God. So would he talk about the unbegotten God? <laughs> That's the Father, by the way. God the, God the Father is unbe unbegotten. So this is all post nicaea language being inserted at various points so you just have to kind of close your mind to those ridiculous edits and just realize there uh, there's, un, there's a actual text underneath this but let me just say this as a result of these cor corruptions then the scholars basically call these the pseudo clementines so in other words they're not the real clementines those have been destroyed but to me that's a real double insult because now people don't take anything of the clementines of any value but if, if you're reading carefully you say there's some juicy uh, truth here that comes out that we can see how the early church was operating it's just we have these evil people like rufinus changing some of the words here and there they don't respect the text but otherwise, I think they're letting the text speak. So let's keep going. And when James had spoken more things about baptism, those seven successive, through seven successive days, so they're having success convincing the Jews to come to Christ. He persuaded all the people and even the high priests that they should hasten straightway to receive baptism. This was fantastic. What's going to stop this? And when matters were at that point that they would all come and be baptized, Paul, so Saul probably was there, changed by historical revision to some one of our enemies. Oh, oh, oh. So, so, uh, oh, so it originally, I think it said some one of our enemies. Okay, and I just put in Paul. Okay, so it originally said some one of our enemies and did not say his name. So, so he either was called Simon Magus or when he, when he wasn't called Simon Magus, he was called one of our enemies. And that's what was there originally. And I, it's Paul. Okay, we all know that. And his men entered the temple and Paul cried out, it would have been again the enemy, <laughs> cried out, O men of Israel, why are you so easily influenced by these miserable men? He began to excite the people and raise a tumult and drive all into confusion with shouting and to undo what had been done by James. Paul, or the enemy, rebuked the priest for having listened to James and, like a madman, began to excite the priests and people to murder James and the brethren, saying, Do not hesitate. Grab them and pull them to pieces. Paul, or the enemy, then seizing a strong brand from the altar, set the example of smiting. Then others also, seeing him, joined in the beating. Much blood was shed. Although James and the brethren were more numerous and more powerful, they rather suffered themselves to be killed by an inferior force than to kill others. Paul, or the enemy, changed into, well, again, it's Paul, uh, or that enemy, attacked James and threw him headlong from the top of the steps and, supposing him to be dead, left him. That's how it ends. There is no reference that he died. There is no reference that any fuller brush was taken to his head and killed him. So that's myth, okay? And that's not true. So he sur obviously survived because he, Paul, many years later, after he's had his Damascus Road experience, is actually talking to James in Acts 15 and Acts 21 and uh, maybe even part of Acts 22. And just so you know where to find this, this is in Recognitions of Clement, Book 1, Chapters, i got to do my Latin to Greek, it's uh, 69 to 70. In Alexander Roberts' Anti-Nicene Fathers, Translations, page, Volume 8, page 95 96 
And I put in here, Catholic editing, editing is obvious, and even Roberts, a Protestant, alludes to these softened references as forgeries. So this is Roberts editing. So he calls them forgeries and titles the heading as tumult raised, raised by Saul. So he just says he knows what it is. So let's just call it what it is. So Roberts, a Protestant, he does a re-edit back to reality. So the Protestant revision of the Clementine homilies is to give it a little more fair reading so we know who's involved here instead of let Rufinus uh, influence us. Um, okay, anyway, so let me continue with the article here. This event on its face involved Paul prior to the Damascus experience. So so now we've seen, just for stop for a minute, pin in it, pin in it, is Dorothea said a fuller blush brush was taken to his head. That wasn't in the account. It was he left him for dead as if he thought he was dead, but he didn't get killed. So Dorotheus is hearing it secondhand with a mistake. So that means, and, and, and then everything else tells us James did not get killed or brained. Okay. Uh, for James was beset because he taught baptism is in place of any further animal sacrifice. So that's interesting. I had never thought about that. Like, is that what Jesus was teaching? Would a post-Damascus Paul be upset with that doctrine? Paul did not teach this as a Christian. He did not teach uh, baptism replaced uh, sacrifices. But would he kill James over this dispute? Of course not. We would surely think Paul was not yet a Christian when he threw James down from the temple pinnacle in the Ebionite account. However, Eusebius mentions an account by Clement. Is this about the Clementine homilies? And he says the account ends with death. Quote, the above words of Clement, who records that he was thrown from the pinnacle of the temple and was beaten to death with a club. So this is where it comes. Someone else is now reporting on the account of the Clementine homilies, and it's misreported. And the word Clement, I think, means is someone meant the Clementine homilies, because this is a, uh, supposedly Clement is relating these stories on behalf of the Ebionite church. Uh, anyway, so there's where you see how this mistake came about, somewhere in there. And this is prior to Dorotheus writing his work. And so you also should know Dorotheus and, and Eusebius are contemporaries, and they share information. And I believe it was Dorotheus who trained Eusebius to be an historian. So you can see how that could have gotten into Dorotheus' head is what we're reading here. However, Eusebius does not repeat the Clementine recognition statement that this casting from the temple was at Paul's hands. There can be two similar accounts whereby, and I'm just saying it's one explanation is that there's two different accounts here. Similar accounts whereby Clement speaks of a similar casting of James the just off the temple pinnacle where Paul is not involved. Maybe. Could that explain why he, he thinks there's maybe a different account? Um, uh, and, and and then uh, that does not end in death. Here it's hard to prove the original Clementines were what Eusebius was looking at. So we, we don't know what, uh, when when Eusebius says Clement is the source of this, I think it's maybe the Clementine homilies, and he, there's been a misreading. But there could have been another source from Clement directly that says, you know, uh, he, he beat him in, what what do you say? Beat to he was beat to death with the club, that James was beaten with the death with the club. So I'm just trying to say is we don't have certain any certain knowledge that James was killed in a different time, that the book of Acts. Like, is he already dead by the time Luke is writing the book of Acts? Is it all myth? <laughs> I mean, that would be what you'd have to conclude is, is James is already dead somehow. Okay. So then uh, we go into, so I know this sounds like a lot of detail, but I think you're also seeing there's a lot of rich history here when you dig into something like this. You, you, so it's good to bring it out so you, you get exposed to it. So Dorotheus has a different account, but some historians ac accounts, and I believe erroneously, put this murder of James four years after the close of the book of Acts. This is first recorded by Dorotheus, Bishop of Tyrus. And that's what we just saw his book, 255 to 365 AD, one of the attendees with the Council of Nicaea in 325. In the final, this final encounter, Paul had an incident with James, the Bishop of Jerusalem, at the temple. In this episode, Paul pushed James off the temple's pinnacle, which led to James' serious injury and death by a beating. So this is what Dorotheus is saying. And so I eventually found this text. And, I, and at this point, I'm writing this not knowing I, I had found the text. I'm recalling from what other people are saying, Dorotheus says. So this sounds identical to the Clementine homilies, except the Clementine account did not end in James' death. The Clementine homilies. Then it says, Bishop Dorotheus, the teacher of Eusebius, a later famous church historian from the early 300s, but who outlived Eusebius, wrote about this in his book. 
the lives, the ends, the martyrdoms of the prophets, apostles. Okay, so this is the book I found from 1663 after I wrote this entire article, and I put it up there earlier, as you can see. In the first edition of this article, I mentioned that I had not found the only edition seemingly available, an edition published in London in 1886, but now we found Dorothea's work published within a section of another book from 1663 at this link, and I've already shown it to you. Yet what my first edition of this article said still remains true, even if it said what it supposedly said, meaning God hidden head. I suspect Dorothea's confused James, the son of Alphaeus, with James, the brother of Jesus, and then he confused what happened to James, the brother of Jesus, in a pinnacle fall that did not end in death with how James, the son of Alphaeus, died. So what I'm assuming really happened is James Alphaeus, who dies in Acts 14, he gets hit in the head with a club and he's killed. And that somehow got confused with James, the brother of Jesus, that he got clubbed in the head <laughs> and he killed, got killed that way, see? But that's not what happened. And uh, but I won't, but in defense of Mr. Dorothy and Doherty and others, so they need to be defended too because they didn't lie. Is there, this is an error inside of Dorotheus. So what prompted the second edition of this article is that I just found Dorotheus' biography of the apostles. It was a section of book from 1663 by Abraham Miller. We already looked at it. All that I suspected in the first edition of this article is here. In the biography of James, Dorotheus writes, and, and we've already read this. I, re I, I had to read it in that very small print. Uh, sorry, I, I, it's, it's here. But if you want, you can screen capture and you'd see what exactly was said. But we already read it together. Uh, hence, we see the errors that we supposed. He confuses James, the brother of J Jesus, with Apostle James, the son of Alphaeus, who died after Paul's Damascus experience, right? So Acts 14 is well after Acts 9, which is the, the Damascus experience. So that's five chapters later. So this is this now makes sense. Alphaeus is the one who dies by getting clubbed. He also ends Paul's throwing... Uh, so Dorotheus also ends Paul's throwing down James with the death, death of James, i.e. the branding of James, which puts this event after the point Paul had his Damascus experience. So again, James, Al son of Alphaeus, is killed by a braining of the head. That's who the, the James was who dies after Paul's experience. But it wasn't at the hand of Paul. Okay. Hence, Dorotheus' account makes Paul a murderer of James after Paul's conversion, a ridiculous scenario. So if you, if you see what he said, he literally said son of Alphaeus is the same as J James, the bishop of Jerusalem. So Dorotheus is saying that Paul killed James the Just, and that had to be after Paul had his experience in Acts 9, because uh, Acts 14 is when James Alphaeus dies, or, and James the Just has to be killed at some other point later than Paul's uh, 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 Damascus experience. So it's really preposterous. It's ridiculous to think that Paul would go and kill Bishop James. So uh, Dorotheus outlives Eusebius and appears to correct Eusebius, who left Paul out. See, so Eusebius told the same account and made it look like Paul killed James the Just. It's hard to believe that Eusebius, usually a good historian, would have said something so so incorrect. But he did. Dorotheus, Dorotheus, Dorotheus claims it's his authority for Paul's casting down James, which led to his death the following source. Abdias in History of the Apostles. What is that referring to? It apparently refers to Abdii de Historia Curtaminis Apostolicae Libri, republished in 1566. Could not get it. That's just some things are just too hard to find or, or retrieve. So uh, if you know James, so I gave a clue to you people out there. If you wanted to research it, if you knew that the word James in English is actually in Latin Jacobus, uh, that might help you find a text that we that could help us. So if you ever find it, let me know. Email me. But that's the 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 dead end I reached. So the conclusion I reached is it's a mistake in Dorotheus. Uh, you know, long story short. But it's true in the Clementine homilies that Paul did, pre-Damascus, did throw James down from the temple. But it's false that he brained him at that time. That's false. That's a lie. I mean a lie. It's untrue. And uh, then I did a study on Dorotheus. He is a very unreliable historian. So I found historians who came back and called his work just trash. <laughs> It's fabulous and erroneous and a lot of other topics. So if you want to read that, you can. But that explains a lot of the sloppiness that he could say something so ridiculous. But I just want to show you when mistakes are made, uh, other people pick up on the mistakes and then they get repeated and people don't dig. Uh, and, and, and 
you see how hard it is to find it. You'd have to find a book from 1663 to see what's going on here. And then you'd have to do all this comparison, spend a lot of time. And maybe people don't like to dig into things to make sure they're being accurate, but we have to be accurate. So I'm going to put this on hold, pause, or I'm going to I'm going to create a new slide because I want to just show you this uh, the sources that revived Dorothea's opinion, including Mr. Doherty and others. And I hope that maybe they'll see this and they'll realize how invalid the the uh, argument was and stop doing that and remove their videos online. Okay, so there are several sources that have revived the error of Dorothea, so that's another reason why we need to quash it now before it gets out of control. <laughs> um, so uh, what is the validity of the sources that point at this work by Dorothea? The first source is completely unreliable. That This is uh, from a, a guy who's known as the Devil's Chaplain. He, was, he became an apostate. He was a reverend at one time. His name is Robert Taylor who in 1829 dug, up, 1829 dug up this fact. He said, James, the son of Alphaeus, was bishop of Jerusalem by appointment with the other apostles. False. Bishop James, the son of Alphaeus, was a <laughs> apostle. And J James, the brother of Jesus, was never an apostle. Okay, so, so you see he's just revived. He's re taken verbatim what was in that book I told you. He was killed by St. Paul. So he's saying that Bishop of Jerusalem, who ran the uh, the conference of Acts 15, was killed by Paul. Having been set by the Jews upon a pinnacle of the temple, Saul, who afterwards was called Paul, thrust him off. And while he breathed after his breathed after his fall, one came with a fuller's club and brained him. So you see how errors get happen. There was con conflation and confusion between James, the son of Alphaeus, an apostle, and how he died and how James got thrown off a pinnacle, didn't die, and then somehow they were merged by, the only source we can figure out is by Dorotheus. So this is found in his book. Uh, this quote is found in Robert Taylor's book, The Dyad Jesus, being a discovery of the origins, evidence, and early history of Christianity. So if he's that going to take that kind of scurrilous fact and, and use it, it's just, it's wrong. It's wrong. Uh, and, and let's go on here. Uh, so, um, there's something else here. Hold on, I'm going to pause for a minute. Infected things. Uh, the history of this event of James being cast down was restated by Eusebius, the pupil of Dorotheus. Um, okay, this is Thompson summarizing Eusebius. Eusebius says the scribes and Pharisees put him on a wing of the temple, but that upon his testifying in favor of Jesus and not against him, they began to stone him, and that one of them, a fuller, beat out his brains with a club with which he used to be closed. Oh, yeah. So now you're starting to see embellishment by historians. So now it's getting changed. So they stoned him. Somehow he isn't even on the temple pinnacle anymore. He falls down, and they beat him with a club. See how, if you're not careful, you can end up with stories... When when there's when there's something confused in the background of the story, it keeps getting embellished and changed every time. Okay. Uh, anyway, all right. I think I'm going to pause here for a minute and take a look. Okay, I'm just going to add in here the ascent of James is another writing by the uh, Ebionite Church, similar to the Clementine homilies. The same source is writing the ascent of James. And the Ascent of James, very much like the Clementine Anomalies, is summarized by Everett Ferguson in Encyclopedia of Early Christianity, 2013, at 6 4, to say this The Ascent of James tells of an enemy, duh, who invaded the temple and threw James down a flight of stairs. No, he was thrown off the temple pinnacle. There's no stairs. <laughs> Uh, that he was thrown down, leaving him for dead. He was rescued by friends, apparently alive. This is at 1.70.8 of Descent of James. This does not say he died, and hence is completely consistent with the Ebonite version of the Clementine Homilies. The author of Descent of James are pro-Jewish, pro-law, and teach Jesus is, quote, prophet like Moses. That means he's uh, the prophet of Deuteronomy 18, verses 18 to 29. And this is in John Painter, Just James, Fortress Press, 1997 and 196. So what's the account we should trust? We'll see. What raised my concern and desire to research this issue was because genealogical experts and scholars, Robert and Emma Nelson in Joseph of Arimathea and Je Jesus, 2015, at page 27, quote Taylor and Thompson, and then comment. While one could understand why Eusebius would have protected Paul by trying to keep the information about Paul's participation in the death of James in 62 AD 
from ever getting out, it is hard to understand why Dorotheus would have stated his this fact if it were not true. So this is another thing, is when you're trying to decide whether Dorotheus stated something that is true or not true, it's the imp- sometimes the improbability of it being true is not the proof that it's true. It's because it's improbable, and something got mixed up in the communication. So um, I believe in the end I communicated all this to, to the two of them. Uh, anyway, let me see if there's anything else. So the conclusion here is that Clementine Homilies is the most reliable count of the binnacle fall of James. So, so Mr. Dougherty, just look there. You'll see that James doesn't kill, uh, doesn't get killed by Paul. Paul never kills James later. James is, it lives until he's in his nineties, which is long after Paul's already in the grave for probably 20, 30 years himself. Um, so that, that I think ends that anyway. So I hope this uh, is a lesson here, is that, uh, you know, just because something is critically said about Paul, don't believe everything you hear. And don't exaggerate what you think is Paul's mistakes or errors. Do not go along with the mistranslations that make him look even more heretical than he really is. You have translators who want him to look as heretical as possible because they want to put such a distance between Jesus and Paul that you have to, you have to choose dispensationalism. Uh, you have to, you know, reject everything Jesus teaches. So they make them so starkly different that you can't find any common ground. And that's wrong, too. 